this son of God, of his own choosing, of his own voluntary, willing intent, he would offer his body and shed his blood. And that blood was not the blood of bulls and goats. That was not the blood of some bird, some animal. It was the blood of God who had clothed himself with flesh and blood, with humanity. It was the blood of the sinless, spotless Son of God. It was the blood of the only begotten, the firstborn of the Father. It was the blood of the one who had triumphed over sin, over Satan, over death. It was the blood of the only sacrifice that could prevail. And he took this blood and he walked into the heavenly tabernacle and he placed it on the mercy seat before God. And that moment, eternal redemption was offered to you and me. This blood doesn't just cover sin. This blood cleanses sin. This blood doesn't leave you in a state of sin consciousness. This blood gives you the righteousness of God. Good morning, church. Welcome to the house of God. It's wonderful to see you all. Um, yeah, you, you can smile back. It's okay. Uh, good morning. Can I request you to please stand? And if you've brought your Bibles, please turn uh, with me to Psalm 78. If you will, please. Psalm 78. Your phones are also fine. For those who are joining us online, welcome. Thank you for joining. Uh, please take a minute to share the link uh, with your family and friends and invite them to join in our service this morning. Right, if you've found Psalm 78, uh, just do like what I'm doing. Keep your finger and then uh, close your Bible first and then go meet someone and say hi, welcome them to the house of God and uh, move from your place is what I meant. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, give them a big smile, uh, high five, whatever. I will call you by your name if you don't move. So. <laughs> awesome. Amen, amen. So Psalm 78, uh, I want to read just a couple of verses from verse 9. Psalm 78, verse 9. It says, The men of Ephraim, though armed with bows, turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by His law. They forgot what He had done, the wonders He had shown them. Amen. I just want to pause there for a minute uh, before if we start uh, singing and enter into a time of worship. Uh, the scripture says, the men of Ephraim, though they were armed with bows and arrows and weapons, they turned back on the day of the battle because they forgot. Now, I don't know what your uh, weapons are. Uh, you know, it could be the guitar or keyboards, your voice, whatever God has blessed you with. Uh, but what will help us use the, our weapons on the day of battle is our capacity to remember what God has done. Amen. Psalm 103 says, Do not forget all His benefits. That is not a suggestion, but it's a command. It's a command that says, Do not forget. Amen. And so this morning, can I encourage each and every one of you to remember, even as we declare these songs, these words, I want to encourage you to remember everything God has done in your life for you. Can we do that, church? Okay, let's try that again. Can we do that? Yes, can we remember everything what He has done for us and sing His praises? Amen. Sing to 
together. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing, come on. Every blessing you pour out, I'll return back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will stay. Come on, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Together and let's worship him this morning. We bless your name, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road, my with suffering, though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will stay.
closest in, Lord, still. Come on, let's lift it up. Every blessing, every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still. Every blessing, let's lift up our hands. Come on, and sing. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back. We turn it back to praise Jesus when the darkness closes in, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name. Blessed be your name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. We worship your glorious name, Jesus. bitter and too sweet who is stirring up my passion who is stirring up my passion 
who is rising up in me who is filling up my hunger with everything I need who that makes me happy who is he that makes me happy who is he that gives me peace Who is he that brings me comfort and turns the bitter into sweet? Who is stirring up my passion? Who is rising up in me? those hands lifted up the Holy One of Israel is in our midst surrounded by the royal diadem of heaven surrounded by the cherubs and the seraphims you are Yahweh is you who brings us peace and comfort Lord we worship your name in this place. We lift up your name like a banner in the sky. Come on, just begin to lift up his name. Declare his name over you, over your families. Come on, don't stay silent. Let your tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Oh, we love you, Lord. Oh, we love your name. We love your name. We love your name. We love you. We love your name. Thank you, Jesus.
your face and I see your face In every sunrise The colors of the morning are inside your eyes The world awakens in the light of the day I look up to the sky and say You're beautiful, oh Come on, let's lift up that anthem Oh, you're beautiful Oh, oh, I see your power I see your power in the moonlit night Where planets are in motion and galaxies are bright We are amazed in the light of the stars It's all proclaiming who you are You're beautiful again for me now you are sitting on your heavenly throne and soon we will be coming home your beautiful are no more. We'll enter in as the wedding bells ring. Your pride will come together and we'll sing. Your Again for me. 
love you are sitting on your heavenly throne and soon we will be coming home you're beautiful there is no one like you who is as beautiful as you jesus we worship you jesus in this place that the Lord is in this place and his beauty is exploding in this place the Bible says worship him in the beauty of his holiness the beautiful one is here in our midst and his eyes so filled with love is radiating in this place I feel like the Lord wants to release something in this place and we just want to take a step of faith and do something prophetic if that's okay and uh, I'm gonna ask Jonathan if you could just release something uh, prophetically over us and while Jonathan is playing I want you to receive whatever it is that the Lord wants to release and uh, let's, let's just receive in this place if you would. Thank you for your presence in this place. Father, we are here to encounter you and you alone. We're not just here to sing a few songs and go away without encountering your presence, Lord. We are not in a hurry. We want to behold your glory like David prays. In your house, in your temple. Oh. 
first and blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee. Who was that is that
is our God. Come on, every hand lifted up, every tongue, let's declare. Name, name above, oh, be lifted high, worthy, so worthy. Father, we acknowledge your infinite greatness, your infinite greatness. You are great beyond measure. How great is our God. And Father, you are worthy to be worshipped be loved, to be adored, to be honored, you are worthy. We thank you. We worship you. I want to request us to please take our seats. Please be seated. At this time, we're going to partake of the Lord's table. If you are a believer, you love the Lord Jesus, you believe in what He did for us on the cross, and you know what this means, you're welcome to partake with us this morning. Most of us would have brought the elements in when we walked in. In case you don't have the elements with you, please raise your hand where you are so the ushers can come to you and serve you. All of us, when all of us are served, we're going to pray together and then we will partake together. So just raise your hand in case you don't have the elements with you so that the ashes can come to you and serve you right where you are. And then we'll pray and partake together. As we partake, we are expressing our faith in what Jesus did for us on the cross. We believe in that. We believe that His blood was shed for us. That His blood avails in our lives. His blood, His blood prevails. His blood cleanses us. His blood has redeemed us, set us free. 
His blood has given us access into the very presence of God. We believe that. And we believe in the provisions of the cross. That there is healing for our bodies and our minds. Through the cross. So as we partake once again this morning. It's another opportunity for us to say, Lord, I'm receiving the blessing. I'm receiving the provision. I'm receiving everything Jesus did for me on the cross. I'm receiving it. And the Bible tells us to do just two things. The Bible tells us to examine ourselves, judge ourselves. If there's any sin, you say, Lord, I'm sorry. I, I received cleansing for it. And secondly, the Bible says to understand, discern the Lord's body. That means understand what Jesus did for us. And then as we partake, we say, I receive what he did for me. I believe it, I receive it. So let's take a few moments to do these two things. Lord, we examine ourselves. We ask for your cleansing. We ask for your forgiveness. Things that we've done knowingly un or things unknowingly, God. We bring it all under the cleansing power of Jesus' blood. And we look to the cross and we thank you for everything that was done. The work that was finished on the cross. And we receive it personally for our own lives. The Lord Jesus said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together, please. The Lord Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant that is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, has cleansed us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, has redeemed us. He has given us access into the very presence of God. The blood of Jesus Christ has brought us into a new covenant with God. And the blood of Jesus Christ causes us to be overcomers, victorious and triumphant. Let's partake of the cup together knowing what the blood of Jesus has done for us. Let's partake together, please. Father, in Jesus' name, we declare every individual, every home, every family under the blood covenant. That the provisions, the promises that you've given, Lord, as part of your covenant with us are fulfilled, are established in each of our lives in our homes, in our families, and for our children. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here this morning just to worship the Lord Jesus with us. Let's take a moment to thank our worship team. Thank you. Thank you all for serving us. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you for coming out early and serving us, both the services. We appreciate you. We appreciate all our volunteers. Let's appreciate all of them who are serving here, inside the auditorium, behind the stage, outside. We appreciate all of you. Thank you for what you do. 
At this time, we want to just recognize anyone who is with us for the very first time. If this is your very first Sunday morning here at All People's Church, we just want to recognize you, welcome you. So if you don't mind, could you take a moment just to stand, please, so that we could recognize you and welcome you. If this is your very first Sunday morning here at All People's Church, we just want to welcome you. Welcome. Welcome. Anyone else? Welcome. Welcome. If you can remain standing, our greeters will come to you very quickly. They'll give you a welcome packet. As soon as you receive that packet, you can be seated, relax, enjoy your time with us. Thank you for being here. Along with the welcome packet is a contact information card. So you could, if you'd like to, take a moment to write your contact details, hand it back to one of these, the greeters, and the information you give to us will help us be in touch with you in the weeks to come. Now, what we do announce is that if you're already part of a church in our city that teaches the Word of God, we always encourage you to remain faithful there. But we're looking for a home church. Please come back, worship with us, and see if this is where God wants you to be planted. For those of you who are visiting with us or you have been visiting with us for a few weeks, at the end of the service, if you've never made a visit to our welcome lounge, we request you to please go to our welcome lounge. It's at the back of the hall towards my right. There'll be a group of people waiting to meet with you. So if you can spend some time there, it'll be an opportunity for us to get to know you and for you to get to know us as well, and we'll be delighted to do that. It'll also be an opportunity for you to ask any questions about the church, what's happening here, and our team will be happy to do that, answer those questions. All right. At this time, the announcements will come up on the screens, and during that time, the offering bags will also be passed around. Please don't feel under any obligation to do anything in the offering. Most of us are giving online, and that's our preferred way of giving. But if you want to give in the offering, that's entirely up to you. Otherwise, just please pass the bag. Everything will work out fine. And right after that, the announcements are Ram, who is one of our young people, will come and lead us in the declaration. And after that, I'll come back to lead us in the service. Thank you. Hello and welcome to All People's Church. Our vision at All People's Church is to be salt and light in the city of Bangalore, a voice to the nation and to the nations. All People's Church is a Jesus-loving, word-focused, spirit-filled family church, an equipping center, a mission space, and a world outreach. As a family church, we grow together as a community in Christ-centered fellowship, caring and serving each other in love. As an equipping center, we empower and equip every believer to live victoriously, mature into Christ-likeness, and fulfill God's purposes for their lives. As a mission space, we engage in meaningful ministry to bless our city, our nation, and the nations with the gospel of Jesus Christ through the Word of God and supernatural demonstrations of the power of the Spirit. As a world outreach, we serve locally and globally by nurturing godly leaders and spirit-filled churches who can impact their regions for the kingdom of God. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you for being with us today.
Inviting all innovators and dreamers, join us for our upcoming workshop, Taking an Idea to Market, where we'll explore the exciting world of entrepreneurship. Learn the essential steps to launch your business and make an impact in the marketplace. Whether you have a business idea brewing or just want to learn how to bring innovation to life, this workshop is for you. So don't miss out on this empowering opportunity. Register today and secure your spot. Have you always wanted to be equipped in the Word of God but did not know how to go about it? Have you always wanted to deepen your relationship with God? And have you been looking for a training that offers sound doctrinal teaching with exposure to practical ministry? Whether you want to study on campus or do an online course or maybe opt for self-paced e-learning, APC Bible College has just the right option convenient for you. So you can earn a degree or just enroll for select courses in a semester. I had been serving in a church and wanted to further equip myself for ministry. I'm so glad that I chose APC Bible College. I was looking for a college which provides practical ministry opportunities. And I found APC Bible College was a perfect place for me. Through exposure to various kinds of ministries, opportunities to observe and learn from others, hands-on training, as we serve through the week and over the weekends, I was able to find the calling of God for my life. Our instructors are able to address the real life issues based on their experience in what is being taught. I found a great community at APC Bible College and made friends for my life. APC Bible College offers the following programs in theology and Christian ministry. A one-year certificate course, a two-year diploma, or a three-year bachelor's degree. In 2023, around 2,500 students have enjoyed learning through all the three modes of learning from over 100 countries. With these learning options, you can study from anywhere in the world or join us on campus in Bangalore, India. So sign up today at apcbiblecollege.org. Enrollment for fall 2024 semester is open and classes begin on Monday, the 5th of August, 2024. All lectures will be in English. For more information, visit apcbiblecollege.org. A team of 19 from APC Bible College were on a mission trip to Mangalore, Karnataka from March 15th to 17th. The team engaged in outreach across Mangalore City to reach young people and also served in APC Mangalore's weekend services by leading worship through performing arts, prayer, preaching and every opportunity available. There were 10 responses to the salvation call on Saturday night. It was such an amazing time. We had them going to different malls on the streets, uh, a very difficult place. But then uh, God did marvelous things with the students and uh, the people who were there in the mall. It was such a great experience this time and we ministered a lot of people and uh, we got the opportunity to minister people here by worship, uh, by sharing the testimony, by preaching the word of God. I had the privilege to witness the beautiful act put together by APC Bible College students. I would encourage each one of you to come join on the mission trips in future so that you can experience the transforming work of God firsthand. Thank you. Well, those were the announcements. For more information on upcoming events, do visit our church website, apcwo.org. Here you can access the Sunday sermon recordings and sermon notes, download our free publications, get information on life groups, and much more. Now sit back, relax, and be blessed as we spend this time in God's presence.
Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Happy to be in the house of God. Yeah, so happy to see you all. Uh, before we get into our declaration, uh, we turn our Bibles to Epistle of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 3. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Now, Bible clearly says, through faith, God framed the worlds. No, when we say God framed the worlds, he created it, he formed it, he constructed it, and he shaped it. No, he brought the things that did not exist by the power of his word. So everything that we see naturally in our natural realm was made out of invisible and spiritual realm. God used his word. By the power of his word, he created the things. And everything in this world is subjected to his word because his word is supreme, you know. Just think like this, uh, we all are living in our world, you know. So by saying our world, I refer to our individual spheres of responsibilities and influences, you know. So we have our families, our homes, our careers, our business, our area of ministries, everything what related to us, you know. We might see that which the things that are not existent or we might desire in the promise, the word of God, which are promised in his word that are not present in our worlds, in our individual worlds. But those things that are not existent can be made visible by the power of his word. Because his power, his word has power. He can create, he can form, he can construct, and he can shape your life according to his word. You know, because his word has power. Do we believe that his word has power to create our lives, our world? Amen. It might be contrary to the things that we are going through. We might be going through sickness, but his word says you will be healed. But that word, when you pronounce on your world, that world will be shaped according to his word. Amen. Do we believe this? We see in, 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 in uh, Romans where Abraham believed God who calls the things that are not as though they are. And he saw the thing that happened in his life. He believed that God will quicken the dead all over again and he saw that happening in his life. So if we believe and speak the word of God over our world, we will see that happening in our lives. Do we believe this? Amen. Without assurance and boldness, let's hold our Bible high up in the air and declare in faith. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word. I believe his word and I live by his word. Christ is my master and to him I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Thank you. All right, morning once again. Just a few more announcements. I'm happy to publish the bands of marriage between Jocelyn Julius, who's a member of our church. Jocelyn is the son of Mr. Julius Karnakaran and Mrs. Sheila Julius. Jocelyn will be getting married to Deepthi Dhanakaran, who's a regular worshiper at Trinity Worship Center, Chennai. Deepthi is the daughter of Mr. Edwin Dinakaran and Mrs. Malathi Dinakaran. The wedding will be solemnized in Chennai on the 12th of April. This is the last of three announcements. If any of you know of any reasons why these two persons shouldn't be joined together in marriage, please give it in writing to the church office. This is the last of three announcements. Let's take a moment to pray for Jocelyn and Deepthi. I'm not sure if they are here today, if Jocelyn is here, um, or maybe he is in Chennai, okay. Uh, let's take a moment, just pray for both of them. Father, we...
pray your blessing on Jocelyn and Deepti. We thank you for their journey of preparation and speak, Lord, your wisdom, your understanding, and your blessing upon them as they are united in marriage and as they make their journey forward. May they grow in you. May they grow into your purposes for their lives. And may they be channels of your blessing to many people. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, just two more announcements. Uh, you may have already received an email communication about uh, the latest version of the All People's Church Bangalore Church app. So in case you haven't put that on your phone or your mobile device, we encourage you to do that. Uh, if you uh, ha had the, an earlier version on your Android device, uninstall it, download the latest version. If you're using an iOS device, you can just, it'll just update by itself. But get the latest version. It's much faster than the old version. <laughs> uh, a lot of the content is the same. Uh, but from now on, we'll be building out from here, adding a lot of features from time to time. Uh, and there'll be a lot more things that you can do through the church app. So get the latest version and make use of it. Another important thing is that we've just launched um, an online platform for our life coaching program. Last year, I think it was the middle of last year, uh, we introduced our life coaching program, a mentoring program where uh, we had um, uh, about 40, 50 people selected from among the church community to be mentors. They, will, they would devote their time. Uh, some of their time voluntarily to serve people who needed help and guidance in certain areas. So we identified five areas, uh, professional skills, spiritual growth, of course, uh, business, marriage and family, and life skills. So these are five areas, and we had people who would be mentors. They would offer some, share their experience, their learning. And anyone who needed some input could reach out for help. So we started that last year, and the coordination was being done manually. So you'd have to call or send an email, and then we would connect. But now we have a platform where all of this would, be, would happen in an automated way. So I think most of our mentors have already gone in and registered themselves there. Uh, and so now we just are opening it out to the church community. So you can go in and register yourself as a mentee. And you can request for a mentor in any of these areas. And the system will automatically recommend several people for you. And you can reach out to any one of them and receive whatever mentoring you need. It might be just one uh, call or one uh, discussion. Or you may have a discussion that goes on for a few weeks, a few months, just depending on what you need. So all you've got to do is to go to apcw.org slash life coaching. And you'll have information there. There's a button that you can click on. It'll take you to the online platform. You can register yourself and immediately you'll be connected to mentors and you can make use of it. All right? Is that okay? So you don't have to trouble the pastor. Send your message. No, no, no. Just joking. You can not reach out to the pastors, but this is a platform that you can just reach out to anyone in the community and, you know, it'll facilitate that, and uh, we can be of help to each other. Initially, we're opening it out just to our church community, but the idea is that over time, maybe in the next six months or so, we'll open it out globally. So that means we could actually serve people anywhere in the world. So people can reach out to us, and we can be a blessing to people anywhere in the world. So we're just taking one step. First, work with people locally, and then we will go global. We'll open it out to people all over the world. So you can have people reaching out for help, for mentoring help uh, from anywhere in the world. And it's a great opportunity to serve people globally. So uh, that's available. You can make use of it. Now, usually towards the end of the year, in December, we plan for the year, the year ahead. And uh, we kind of plan out what we're going to speak on during the coming months. So in December of last year, we decided that in the month of April, we'll be addressing certain cultural issues, things that are slowly becoming important in our culture, 
slowly in our world, but probably has already become very important in other parts of the world. Issues that, for which the church is being challenged, we as believers are being challenged, and people want to know what is our response to those, those issues. So I'm just going to give us a, 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 a heads up on what we're going to be journeying through in the month of April. This, today, on Sunday, this Sunday, we're going to talk about God, art, creativity, and faith. So today, we're talking about art and creativity and how that relates to God and faith in our lives. Next Sunday, we'll talk about God, science, technology, and faith. And we're going to address just specific things, not everything, but we're going to address artificial intelligence and neural implants. That's from the technology side. From the science side, we're going to talk about frozen embryos and in vitro fertilization. We're not going to talk about how to do that. We're going to talk about what is our response to what's happening, right? The ethical and spiritual issues, our response to what's happening in these fields. So that'll be next Sunday. So if you know people who've been asking questions, invite them, and hopefully uh, it will be informative and also might answer some of their questions. On 21st, that's two Sundays from now, we'll talk about gender ideology and creation care. Two big issues. One is gender ideology. Are you a he, she, them, they, who are you? And if you're in the workplace, that's like, you got to find some pronoun to define yourself. And it's slowly becoming, you know, more prevalent even in our context. It's already a big issue in some other parts of the world. And it's slowly becoming more and more of an issue here in our own uh, country or in, in our context. So uh, how do we engage with gendered language and pronoun and these pronouns and, 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 and things around it in the workplace or when you're engaging with people. What should our response be as believers? And then about creation care. Do, I mean, are we, do we need to care about our environment or just forget about it and live as though nothing matters? What's a biblical response to this? So we'll talk about that on April 21st. And again, if you know people who are, you know, um, struggling with those kinds of things, thinking through on those things, invite them here so that perhaps they will receive something or learn something that might be useful for them. So today, we're going to talk about God, art, creativity, faith. How many of you were here over last weekend? Uh, we had some amazing, we had an amazing Easter musical theater production. Amen? You all enjoyed it? Okay, let's give everyone who participated another, you know, big round of appreciation. But what we saw, now we've been, as a church, we've been doing these productions, big and small, over the years. But I think last weekend was another high point uh, in, in, in this whole expression. But what we saw was art, creativity, theater, music, all of that coming together and becoming a powerful medium of communicating the message of the cross. Right? It became a powerful way to engage, to bring that message in a fresh new way to our hearts. And so many of us were touched and were just blessed through what was done. So I want us to think about Art and creativity. As, as people of faith, people who believe in God, how do we look at this whole realm? And I want to just encourage us along these lines. Uh, of course, in, in 40 minutes, uh, there's not a whole lot we're going to cover, but hopefully some of the things we do touch on this morning will uh, be of value to us. The first thought I want us to consider is that God himself is the great creator artist. When we look at creation, we think about the great power of God. Oh, God is so powerful. You know, is, is, the universe is so big and, and massive. God is so big. 
and we look at creation, we say God is amazing in His wisdom because there is design, amazing design in everything. And you look at the vast expanse of the universe, or you look at a little microorganism, there's intelligence, there's amazing design. So God is so wise. But you and I will also agree that there is art and there's beauty in creation. I mean, look at all the colors, the sounds. And you can, you know, some of us will like hills and, and you can go to some place and you can just sit down and look at all the grandeur. If you're sitting down and you're seeing a valley and seeing hills in the distance, it's like somebody painted it or it's just amazing. You can sit there and stare at it. Just enjoy it. Or maybe you like the oceans and you can go to a beach and sit there and for hours just the waves coming over and over again on the seashore and you're looking out on the vast expanse and just enjoy it. There is art. There is beauty. So not only is God powerful and God is wise, but we can say that God is a master artist. That it's an artistic beauty in what he's done, what he's created. And some of the Psalms bring that out. We'll just read a few of these Psalms. Psalm 8, and most of us are familiar with these Psalms. Psalm 8, verses 1, 3, and 4. The Psalmist says, Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You set your glory above the heavens. So he's looking at creation. He's saying, God, it's excellent. I see your glory in creation. Verse 3, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. Then he says, what is man? You're mindful of him, the son of man, that you visit him. Psalm 19 verse 1. Let's read it out together, please. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. God's glory is, is, is being proclaimed, is being described, is being displayed in all of creation. They're showing His artistry. Romans 1 and verse 20. Romans 1 verse 20. Paul wrote, he said, For since the creation of this world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. That means creation is, is, is revealing the invisible attributes of God. It's displaying the Godhead. And so when you look at creation, you could say, one of the attributes of God is that he's a great artist. Just look at everything. Look at the butterfly. I mean, just look at the flowers. Look, just look at all the beauty, the art that you see in creation. So God is the master creator artist. So he's the greatest creator artist. So creation is God's artwork. And creation as God's artwork glorifies God. And creation as God's artwork. It reveals God. It unveils God to us. So God's artwork, it glorifies Him, it reveals Him. Now, I want, to think, I want us to think about this. You and I have been created in the image of God. Which means you and I have been created to be creative. So let's say this together. Put your hand on your chest. Let's say, I've been created to be creative. Let's say it again. I've been created to be creative. So we've been created in the image of God. God's a creative God. 
He's a master creator artist. You and I have been created in his image. So being created to be creative. And today, for, in this message, when we talk about art and being creative, we're not just limiting ourselves to music and painting and dance and drama and just those forms of art. I want us to think about being creative in just any sense. You can create designs. You can find, create solutions. You can create processes, systems, a lot of things. So it's not just creative in the sense of I'm being, I, I like to paint, I like to sing, I like to dance. Those, one, those are wonderful expressions of creativity. But creativity is expressed in so many different ways. In whatever you are doing, in whatever work you are engaged, you can be creative. Coming up with something fresh and new. So, I want us to think about the purpose of art and creativity. Just going to mention some things there. And then a little bit on the process, which is how do we receive creative flow? That itself is a very big topic. And so, I will just touch it in passing and not necessarily get into too much detail, but we'll talk a little bit about the process, the creative flow. And then before we close, we'll, we'll just talk about some applications, some areas where we can expect, we can ask God intentionally, God, I want to be creative in these areas. And I want to encourage all of us to be people who will bring out creative expressions in whatever area we're involved in. Whatever area you're involved in. So, Art and creativity, from a believer's perspective, what are, what are some purposes that it would serve to connect both our faith and as well as that creative expression? So I'm not just doing it to make some money or make, you know, get some attention, but what purposes could it serve? And I want to just present very quickly five things here for us to consider. But look at Psalm 33, verses 2 and 3, please. Psalm 33, verses 2 and 3. It says, let's read it out, please. Praise the Lord with a harp. Make melody to Him with an instrument of ten strings. Sing to Him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. Now, let's start at the end of the verse. Play skillfully. That means your skill is involved. And in this case, obviously he's talking about playing music and singing and making melody. So your skill is now producing something very creative and artistic, which is, in this case, music and, and song and singing. But that is now being used to worship God. To glorify God. So your skill. What is your skill? So I'm a software engineer. I like to build systems. Wonderful. Through that skill, when there is creative expression released, that can serve the purpose of God. I will mention what, it, what purposes can serve. So I like to bake. Wonderful. That skill can be used uh, when it's expressed, when there's creative expression through that. It can be used to glorify God, whatever your skill is. Each one of us have been given different skills. You're a leader, you're a manager, you're a designer, whatever you are. But your skill that releases creative expressions, fresh new ideas that, that are birthed from God, can glorify God. So if you want to put it in some nice words, number one, adoration. Your art, the art can be an expression of worship toward God. And we just read that verse. 
where that music is, is used to worship God. So your creative expression, whatever it may be, is an expression of adoration to God. God, I'm worshiping you with this. Number two, it's revelation. It's an expression of the glory of God. We saw how in creation, which can be considered as God's master, master art piece, the glory of God is revealed. And so in, in what you produce, there can be the revelation of the glory of God. It's very interesting in Psalm 90 and verse 17, and this is not on the PowerPoint, but it's in the Bible. Psalm 90 verse 70, the psalmist prayed. He said, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. Very interesting connection. God's beauty and the work I do. That means the beauty of the Lord can be expressed through the work of our hands. So let's all say this. Put your hand on your chest. Say this with me. The beauty of the Lord my God is revealed through the work of my hands. Let's say it one more time. The beauty of the Lord my God is revealed through the work of my hands. Think about that. What is your work? What do you do? Now we're all doing different things. But the psalmist is praying, Lord, your beauty, your splendor, your excellence, you know, of this delightfulness of God, let that be seen. Through what I'm doing, through the work of my hands, what are you doing? Let the beauty of God be seen. So if you're building a system, designing a car, nice car, whatever you're doing, May the beauty, the splendor of God be revealed through the work of your hands. So that's Revelation, number two. Number three, there is restoration. I don't have a chapter and verse for this. This is more based on practical experience where we, when we engage in art or in just some creative expression that, that, you may be, that we may be comfortable with, it becomes an opportunity for personal healing and wholeness. We are restored, spirit, soul, sometimes even in the body. Because we are going through a difficult time in life, a difficult season, and at that time you are engaging in something creative that you like, whether it's music or painting or writing or design or whatever you like. And you're absorbed in that because you're going through pain. You're going through hardship. And this is a, time, this is a way for you to just separate yourself from that pain, that hardship. And while you're engaged in that creative expression, it becomes a vehicle of healing to you. And so God can use art and those creative expressions to actually minister his healing to us personally. To us personally. So think about that. Number four, communication. Art as a medium of communication. Where we can use song and music and poetry and the spoken word and, and so many other ways to Communicate God to people. What you saw last weekend was another way. We're communicating God to people. And so that creative expression can be a way for us to communicate God. And lastly, art becomes a channel of demonstrating God's power to people. God's power flows through those artistic expressions. When King David, or he wasn't king at that time, and David played on his harp, Saul, who was troubled by demons, experienced deliverance. David is playing on his harp, 
and Saul is experiencing deliverance. So it means through music, through that creative form of expression, the power of God is being released or was released. And that's why even when you, on, you know, when we worship God and the worship team's on stage and they're playing, don't waste your time looking at, you know, what is he wearing, what is she wearing. That's not the time to be worried about all those things. As these musicians are playing and singing, it's an opportunity for God's power to touch your life and my life. So focus on that. Don't worry too much on all these other things. Say, God, as I worship you, through this creative expression of music and song, your power can actually touch me and heal me, heal my mind, heal my emotions, set me free, break some chains. Do something for me in those times of worship. So five things we saw very quickly. What purpose can it serve? There is adoration. There is revelation. There is restoration. There is communication. There's also the demonstration of the power of God. Are you all with me so far? I say, Pastor, I came to the wrong church today. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> the next aspect I want to touch on is the creative flow. The creative flow is just another phrase we're using for inspiration. And most of us would recognize that for creative expression, we, we like that inspiration. You feel inspired. And then out comes a song or a poetry or some expression. So there are several ways that you and I can posture ourselves to receive that inspiration, that creative flow. Uh, some common ways we know, and I'll just mention these, uh, reflection. Sometimes when you're reflecting on something, you get a fresh new insight. You get a fresh new idea. You say, like, wow, I've never seen that before. And you're reflecting on God's Word. Suddenly something new comes up. Wow, I haven't seen that before. Or when you're benchmarking, that means you're looking at something what others have done. You're, you're looking at that, and as you're benchmarking, you're looking at something, a new idea comes. You're posturing yourself for a creative flow, for inspiration. Three, it could be lateral thinking, where... You're looking at something being done in one domain, in one area, and you're able to connect that, hey, this is how this same thing can be done in this domain, in another area. You're thinking laterally, and you're getting a new, an idea for this domain based on something you observe somewhere else. Sometimes it's just random thinking. Most of us may be good at that, I don't know. <laughs> you just let your thoughts flow. You're just walking. Not really bothering about anything and just, just a free flow of thoughts and suddenly you get an idea. Wow. Oh, a new thought, a new idea, a solution, something creative. You're not really focused on anything, you're just letting a free flow of thoughts and you get something new, fresh. Sometimes a change in environment helps. You go from the city out into the jungle or out by the seaside, somewhere, a change of environment, and then, you know, you, you have that creative flow, the inspiration that comes, or to reading, or listening, conversations, all of these things could spark that creative flow. What I want to impress on us is this, that God inspires and gives us the creative flow by His Holy Spirit. So let's all say this together. God inspires and gives me the creative flow by His Holy Spirit. Say it one more time. God gives me the creative flow by His Holy Spirit. While posturing ourselves, like doing all these practic practical things, is a good thing. It's a good thing. But the Holy Spirit who's dwelling in you, 
can give you inspiration for fresh new things that you are involved in. I just look at two examples. In Exodus chapter 31, verses 1 through 5, the Lord is speaking to Moses. Now, he's got an assignment for Moses. Moses, you have to build this tabernacle, and it's got to have all these artistic things. And so how is he going to get it done? He says in Exodus 31, verses 1 to 5, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, in all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold, in silver, in bronze, in cutting jewels, for setting, in carving wood, to work in all manner of workmanship. Now think about this. What is God saying? I have filled this man with the Holy Spirit. And he's going to be able to design these things. Artistic things. Wood, gold, silver, whatever, all these things. He's going to design it. The Holy Spirit giving him that creative flow to come up with these things. I don't, don't think they had design schools in those days. No. Holy Spirit give you inspiration. Do it. Can the Holy Spirit do the same today? Can. Whatever you are engaged in, your space, your area of work, the same Holy Spirit who is in you can help you design, come up with some creative things. So you pray. Ask Holy Spirit, please give me. I want a creative flow. I need some inspiration. I need some new ideas. I want to do some new things in whatever you're doing. The same Holy Spirit can do it for you today. Think about David. And this is 1 Chronicles 28, verses 12 and 19. David was a shepherd boy. He never stepped inside a university campus. Never managed to make it past grade 10. I don't know. I'm just making things up. He never had these opportunities. He was just a shepherd boy. But now he's king. And has a desire in his heart to build a temple for God. He has a desire. And what happens? This is what David says. First Chronicles 28 verse 12 and 19. He says... And the plans for all that he had by the Spirit. Everybody say, by the Spirit. Like, let's put some energy into this. By the Spirit. So all the plans he had by the Spirit. Of the courts of the house of the Lord. Of all the chambers all around. Of the treasuries of the house of God. And of the treasuries for the dedicated things. It means where to keep, you know, where to keep all the, these, these important things. He designed the whole temple. Verse 19. All this said David. The Lord made me understand in writing. By his hand upon me. All the works of these plans. What is David saying? Hey God and God's hand was upon me. And God gave me all these ideas. On how to design the temple. Never been to design school. But the Holy Spirit upon him gave him the design, gave him the plan for the whole temple. Now he didn't build the temple, but he planned it, designed it. All the rooms, all the chambers. Can the Holy Spirit do something like that today? Of course. So whatever your sphere of activity, the Holy Spirit can give you design, idea, plan. But you ask, Lord, I need that creative flow. I need that inspiration. I want to come up with something that can solve the problem, address this need, uh, bring some innovation, do something different. Holy Spirit, give me that inspiration. And the same Holy Spirit 
who inspired Bezalel or David can inspire you and me today. Same. Psalm 45 verse 1, again, this is not in the PowerPoint. Don't get angry with me, it's in the Bible. Psalm 45 verse 1, the psalmist says this. He says, my heart is overflowing. So everybody say, my heart is overflowing. Let's say it one more time. My heart is overflowing. Now that, that word overflow literally means it's bubbling over. There's something stirring inside me. So that's the creative flow. So someone is saying, my heart's overflowing. Or he's saying, I'm feeling really inspired. Something is bubbling in me. And then he goes on to say, with a good theme, I recite my composition concerning the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. And then he writes that psalm. A psalm that is so beautiful because it's a prophetic psalm about Jesus. Psalm 45. But how does it start? He says, I'm feeling something bubbling up inside me. I'm feeling this inspiration coming. I'm feeling this creative flow. It's a very nice theme. I want to write it. My tongue is a pen of a radio. Meaning these words are coming out. and I'm going to write it down. And he writes a psalm. You and I must recognize this inspiration, this creative flow that just bubbles up inside you. And it doesn't have to be about writing a song or a psalm or a poetry. That creative flow can come. Maybe you're designing a system, a software system, or a, you're designing some system, a process. Uh, you're setting up an organization. You're thinking how to structure your organization. Maybe you are thinking about a new design for a car or whatever. It just could be something different, whatever you're doing. And from within you, the Holy Spirit can give you that inspiration. But then you capture it. In this case, the psalmist wrote the psalm. In your case, you may need to draw a diagram, paint a picture, whatever. You capture that inspiration, that creative flow. So the Holy Spirit inside you, He can inspire this. You capture it. Amen? So I want to encourage us to tap into, and, and you know, we're not going to elaborate on this. I'm leaving this here. Recognize, you tap into this, you capture this creative flow, and express it. Do something with it. And nurture this in your life. The ability to receive from the Holy Spirit fresh ideas. One simple thing you and I can do is ask. Ask the Holy Spirit. Lord, give me. I have, there's a problem I'm facing. I need a solution. Or God, how do I design this? Or God, how do I put something in place so that my organization can do better? Ask. Whatever your situation is, ask. Ask the Holy Spirit. And then be sensitive to that inspiration. Something that bubbles up inside you, just comes out. Be sensitive. Capture it. Write it down. I, it's, good, it's a good idea to keep a notebook close to you. Or you can write it on your computer. Just capture that idea, whatever comes. Don't, don't lose it. So, I just want to point us to a few creative expressions. I mean, practically, you know, what, what can we do with this? And obviously, there's an endless list of creative expressions we can come up with. But I also want to mention a few just to get us, just point us to certain things. And you might be able to connect with one or more of these. Worship team, please come. Many ways in which creativity, art and creativity can be expressed for practical purposes, number one, you can have creativity in vision. And leadership requires vision. If you're a leader, you need to have a vision. If you don't have a vision, you and the people following you are not going to go anywhere. 
And sometimes you just need a fresh vision. You need to be able to see the unseen, but you need to see something new. Well, then you can lead people into that. And so we need creativity in vision. I mean, leaders run out of fresh vision. They and their organization just stagnate. They don't go anywhere. It's not that they don't have the, the organization doesn't have the capacity. The problem is with the leader. There is no creativity in vision. And so ask God, God, I need something fresh. I need something new. What can we do differently that can bring impact? Secondly, creative within innovation. Creating new ideas or methods or processes or services or solutions. Innovation in anything. You're innovating. And so yes, God, I need something. I need an idea. Fresh ideas. Creativity in design. But you're designing something. Whether it's a product, clothing, whatever. Creativity in design. Holy Spirit, give me something fresh, new. Creativity in products. There are products waiting to be brought into existence which can address certain needs. Can make life better. Maybe help people. Cure diseases. So many things. Products. Creativity, creativity in solutions. Problems waiting to be solved. And you say, God, how do I solve that problem? How, how do I... I, I, how do I Help a need. Help people's needs. What kind of a solution can I bring? Ask God for creativity in that. Creativity in communication. New ways to communicate things to people. Especially when something is very complex. And you can break it down and communicate it to people in such a way they say, Oh, that's so easy. That's a good thing. When you lack creativity... Easy things become very difficult. Something actually very simple, but the way they communicate, like it looks like you have to go to the moon to solve it. But when there is creativity, something that is so complex is broken down, is made so simple. So, wow. But God can give you that creativity in communication, creativity in relationships. How do you build people? How can you inspire people? How can you resolve problems? How can you? Develop people, coming up with new ways to do that. And these are just some, some pointers. So in closing, I want to just impress on us today that as people of faith who believe in God, we are actually positioned to be greater. We are in their best place. God's a creative God. He made you and me in His image to be creative. And as we give, release these creative expressions, we are adoring and there is adoration of God. There's a revelation of God. There's a communication of who God is. There's a restoration that we can experience. And there's a demonstration of His power that other people can experience. But we must tap into the creative flow and God's made it possible by giving us His Holy Spirit that His Holy Spirit can inspire as He did in times past. He can also do today. He can inspire something new and fresh through your life. But we need to tap into it. We need to ask Him. And there are many, many ways, practical ways and practical things that can be done. But you and I expressing, giving birth to these creative expressions. And we can make a difference, a meaningful difference in the lives of people around us. Amen? So let's rise to our feet, please. And make it your prayer as we stand. Say, Lord, let creativity flow through my life. 
I want to experience more of this creative flow that comes from the Holy Spirit. Let the beauty of the Lord my God be seen in the work of my hands. Let the creative artistry of God, the excellence of God, the beauty of God be seen through the work of my hands. As we take a few moments just to worship and sing, engage with the Lord, pray, and just ask Him. In whatever you are involved in, whatever you are engaged in, God, I want more of that creative flow. I want to have more of those creative expressions in and through my life. The one who does impossible is reaching out to make me whole, reaching out to make me whole. The one who put death in its place, his life is flowing through my veins, his life is flowing through my veins. The one who does impossible is reaching out to make me whole, is reaching out to make me whole. The one who put death in its place, his life is flowing through my veins, his life is flowing through my veins. I believe. You're the God of miracles I believe in you I believe in you You're the God of miracles Yes, you are I believe in you I believe in you You're the God Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that through each of our lives your beauty be revealed. Even through creative expressions, Lord, and whatever we are involved in. That people here, God, will receive the creative flow from your Holy Spirit. I come up with some new ideas, new solutions, new strategies, plans. They'll do new things in whatever they're engaged in that will 
touch the lives of people, that will glorify you, that will bring healing, that will bring deliverance, that will provide solutions to people. And Father, we also pray for those of us who are in difficult situations that by the Holy Spirit you will give us the solutions we need to address the problems to address the challenges in life that there will be that inspiration coming to our hearts and minds teaching us how to handle the situation how to work through the challenge and to see the work of God take place so in the name of Jesus, the problems we face, the challenges we are facing, may the creative solutions of God come into our hearts and minds to address those things, to see healing, to see deliverance, to see life change, problems resolved, needs met, and God glorified. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord, let your healing virtue flow even right now in this place. Let your healing virtue flow touching our spirit, soul, and body. Healing, making us whole. Let our bodies be healed. From every affliction, every disease, every ailment. By your power, by your presence right here in this place. Let our minds and emotions be made whole in the name of Jesus. Lord, by your power, by your presence in this place. We thank you. Thank you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God designed you to be creative, so go be creative. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Have a great week. See you again.
joining us online we trust this service was a blessing to you visit apcwo.org for free resources like books and sermons and sermon notes and for information on apc bible college in bangalore visit apcbiblecollege.org if you have any prayer requests you can always send an email to prayer at apcwo.org and we'll be sure to pray for your needs do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store. Have a great week and God bless you.